I dropped it five times, as I said before, testing it in between each drop, turning it on, turning it off, switching through the modes, and it kept going. It just kept going, and I'm always happy to see that. If they say it will survive a one meter drop, trust me, I'm gonna drop it. Hey guys, welcome back, and thanks for tuning in to my review of the Archer A1 V3 flashlight from Through Night. We're gonna to try to make this a quick review, giving you all the details, giving you all the experience, and giving you the impressions, etc., and getting right back out of here. We're gonna to try to do that anyway. So, um, talking a little bit about what's included with the light. Here's the box that it came in. This one says V2 on it. I think that's just an old box or something, but that is the box it comes in. It comes with a lanyard, which is here in the package, an extra clicky switch, or the tail cap anyway, and a couple of O-rings in there in that little pouch. Comes with all that, there's your little, um, you know, moisture absorber and all that stuff, and also it comes with this right here, which is your user manual. And it's in lots of different languages, and there's all the stuff for English right there. Warranty says two year free replacement if anything goes wrong with it, 30 days refund by Amazon, limited lifetime maintenance on these if you have issues with them. So that's pretty cool. Talking about some of the features, some of the um, functionality of this light, we can see that it has a tail cap right there, or the uh, tail switch I should say. It can stand up on that tail switch sometimes. Maybe not anymore after I dropped it. In fact, probably not, because I dropped it so many times I actually got a little bit of uh, some rounding going on here, but I'll show you that here in a second. I think it did stand up on its tail originally though. Pretty sure it will, if you don't spend a bunch of time abusing it the way I did. We see that that uh, tail switch turns the light on and then switching through modes is this button right here. And we'll show you all those modes uh, out in the dark where you can see them properly in a second. But uh, one of the things about having that switch up there is that, well, one of the things I like about that particular switch is that it's actually not sharp, but it sticks out enough and it is metallic, so it has a very different texture compared to the rest of the head there. So if you're just searching for that button, it comes up pretty quickly. One of the lights I've recently tested that I didn't find that on is this one right here. It's the Olight S30R Javelot. And I myself, and I've heard from other people that as you pass by that switch, you can sort of accidentally pass it over. Uh, I don't know why I do that, but I've tended to do that. It's just so flush with the rest of the head. This one, however, seems to stick out the right amount, and I, I find it every time I uh, rub my thumb over the top of it, so it works well. You see a little bit of knurling there on the top. Uh, not knurling, but uh, kind of some crenellations, a little bit of, uh, you know, turrets if you want to call them that. We have our um, pocket clip right here which seems to work great. The only thing I don't like about it is that it doesn't wrap back around on itself and become a deep carry clip like the Archer V2. And that's the one thing that I would say the Archer A1 V2 has over the Archer A1 V3. That's a long name and hard to say. Um, the reason they call it the, not A1, but the 1A is because it takes a single a, a double A battery and dropping it on the floor, but a single double A battery. And so that's the reason why they call it that. And this battery is getting beat a little bit. I wonder if that's from the drop. Yeah, it probably was. Anyway, so that's the situation with that. As I grab my tail cap back from the floor, one other thing we'll talk about, we're just kind of talking about the comparison to the previous version. Um, it's it's worth noting that this one is considerably smaller than the first or the second version. So I really like that about the V3. Okay, it's lighter, the weight comes in at uh, 42 grams is what it's listed at, which is about an ounce and a half. Add the battery in there and you're looking at another, I don't know, maybe three ounces in total. So it's a really great weight for EDC, um, good size for EDC, given that it's a single AA battery in there. This one I always thought was a little overbuilt, and I love that they kind of simplified things in the V3. It's a better light in every way except for the pocket clip. I just wish we had that wraparound pocket clip on there for deeper carry. That's my personal preference, but um, that's, I gotta state it. I would say though, however, that I have been carrying this light for a good two weeks or so, and I like it. I mean, it carries pretty well. Yes, you do have all this sticking out of your pocket, whether it be your cargo pocket or you know, jeans pocket or whatever. But if you can deal with that, 
it carries really well and it's so accessible and you know really lightweight so and, and in some cases in some pockets you could probably just drop this entire thing down at the bottom of your pocket and walk around with it like that it's not uh, bigger than a lot of pocket knives so the size is great uh, anyway so I do think this is a good EDC light it's gonna be good for camping for hiking things like that a great light that doesn't take up too much space not too much weight um, yeah, I recommend it overall. Now let's get into some of the testing and show you some of the abuse I put this through. But first, let's show you uh, how it shines out to around 30 yards. I have a little camp chair out on a road just out that way, turning it on high, and there's my chair. Uh, you don't see the whole thing very well, or I can't see it all that well in the viewfinder, but I can recognize it pretty well uh, with my naked eyes, or through my glasses anyway. Uh, so it is there, and the flashlight is picking it up well enough, catching a reflection and beginning to identify the shape. So I would say that this beam is definitely adequate for um, picking up shapes and picking up objects at around 30 or so yards. And let's look at the different modes, and while we're at it, we'll also check out that beam on the Archer 1A V3. This is Firefly mode right here, the lowest mode, and that comes in at 0.1 lumens. Going up from there by just pressing on that side switch, that brings us up to low, which is advertised at 17 lumens. Press it once again, and we've got medium advertised at 75 lumens. And then from that point up, one more click, and you've got high at 200 lumens. Again, this is what's advertised, and I suspect that you'll get the actual lumen counts with the best batteries that you can find on the market. Uh, 200 lumens, you're supposed to get about 115 minutes. Firefly, 17 days. Now that's what they say. Low, 22 hours. Medium, 5 hours. It's also got a strobe mode that's meant to last 3.5 hours at 200 lumens. And to get into that, you just press and hold that side button. And there's your strobe. All right, you've seen the beam, and you've seen the spot, you've seen the modes. Now, let's get to some of the hard use testing or some of the beating I did on it. I always like to drop my lights. If they say they'll survive a meter drop, I drop them. And I drop them about five times to uh, prove that they'll survive it. This one I did a good five times from maybe even a little bit higher than a meter. Got lots of dings on it, and especially here on the tail, we can see a little bit of a, what looks like a kind of a dent bend right there. And on that side as well. So sure, it's taken a beating, no doubt. Uh, we might have some on the bezel as well, a little chip right there. Uh, it's wearing pretty pretty nicely actually. Um, as far as the um, you know the anodization on the aluminum, it seems to be holding up pretty well. Yeah, a little nick, a little ding here and there, but that's to be expected when you drop it on concrete. Otherwise, yeah, I'm pretty impressed. And the functionality of it never stopped. I dropped it five times, as I said before, testing it in between each drop, turning it on, turning it off, switching through the modes and it kept going, it just kept going, and I'm always happy to see that. If they say it will survive a one meter drop, trust me, I'm gonna drop it. And if it survives it and it performs just as well as it did before being dropped, hooray, I'm excited to see that. We also dumped this one in water, and again, if they say it's waterproof, IPX8 is what, they're, what they claim it's rated to, then I'm gonna test that. Now, I'm not gonna drop it in two meters of water, but I will, uh, drop it in a small jug of water and agitate it a fair bit, which I did. Agitated that, kind of swished it around in that water for a good little while, left it in there for a solid 30 minutes, maybe a little more, came back to it, actuated it and went through the modes under the water. So I actually turned it on and off and then switched modes while it was there underwater to make sure that it was not only still functioning, but able to um, function and be useful to you underwater because that is a big bonus and of course it was a huge win there was absolutely no issues with it throughout all that testing and I'm very very pleased to see that so I promised I would get you out of here in a short amount of time and I think I have well, I kind of have thanks to through for sending me this one for testing and review and thanks to all of you guys for watching I'm the late Boy Scout we'll see you later this is an absolutely fantastic flashlight I've loved it look how tiny that is really really small some nice knurling there on the head the bezel uh, and also up over in the, the sort of the, I guess you call it the handle but you know the whole thing is so small it's all a handle <laughs>